The Indianapolis 500 is called the greatest spectacle in racing. But in 2014, one team drove for more than just the checkered flag. 1996 Indy winner Buddy Lazier used this year's event to promote the University of Iowa's Wynn Institute for Vision Research. His reason is personal. Lazier's daughter, Jacqueline, is affected by a rare eye disease known as aniridia. Aniridia is you're, you're born without your eye, iris or partial iris. In Jacqueline's case, uh, she's missing the iris in both of her eyes. Um, and aniridia can have many different uh, side effects. Uh, for Jacqueline's case, it's glaucoma. Uh, so her condition is aniridia and glaucoma. Sometimes it's tough in surgeries and stuff, but I learned to deal with it. And she'll never complain, by the way, in 12 years, you know. No. So she'll take eye drops seven times a day, all these different eye drops. She's had a handful of surgeries and never complained once. The Wynn Institute is named for Stephen A. Wynn, who committed $25 million to the University of Iowa for research on rare inherited eye disease. Steve Wynn and I have always looked at research as being important. Uh, based on some of the uh, organizations I've been around, Iowa is at the top of the heap in uh, finding a cure. The Wynn Institute scientists work on disorders that range from the most common cause of blindness facing humans today, which is age-related macular degeneration, to just impossibly rare conditions that occur in perhaps one person in the United States per year. Ed Stone and his group part of the Stephen Wynn Institute are remarkable and it's just phenomenal the uh, sort of the effort that's being put forth right there in the University of Iowa who would have ever thought. Walker, a Michigan State alum involved with the racing team. Walker's son, Sam, is also affected by an inherited eye disease. When you first hear about something that you don't think you can solve, uh, it's very hard, and especially when you're a problem solver. Not being able to solve a problem and then have it be related to your child is very hard. And, you know, we really had never thought about eye disease. The very first thing I heard from anything about this disease, I was told to Google it by an ophthalmologist. That's what they told me. And then we got to Iowa and it completely changed. So much optimism involved in that, that I. I don't even, I have complete confidence, honestly. If somebody has recently been told that they have an inherited eye disease and they've been told that there's nothing that can be done, I just want them to know that there is an army of people working on making those words different today and there is realistic hope for a better outcome. The way that Ed has approached this of saying, we're completely open to other people to share their information with us, and we will openly share ours, means that our chance of getting there is even greater because we're multiplying the effort across everybody who's working at it in the world. We need to think beyond one lab, beyond one institution, and we, we need to look at this goal of people not being blind anymore. In Bellevue, Iowa, the Drapeau family has high hopes for this research. Their sons, Reese and Ryder, were both born with a sight impairment, Labor's congenital amaurosis, a difficult diagnosis for the parents to receive. I was sad, actually. He was never going to see, more or less, what we were originally told, you know, that, and it was only going to get worse as he got older, and there were some other issues that could go with it, and it was scary. This is Let go. Loosen up your hand. Reese is very much a bookworm, loves the Goosebone series. Ryder, on the other hand, his name is Ryder, I swear, for a reason. He loves anything that has to do with a motor, anything that runs, he's yeah, good he with. He can ride it or drive it, that's his, <laughs> what he likes to do. Yeah. At Iowa, the Drapeaux were seen by Dr. Arlene Drack, a pediatric ophthalmologist and geneticist affiliated with the Wynn Institute. Many people think that blindness in children is rare. Fortunately, it is fairly rare in the vast scheme of things, but we see it a lot here because we're a referral center and a research institute. So the Drapeau boys both have very, very limited vision, but they are both all boy. They, if you've met them, you know they, they do everything that uh, boys love to do, and they have just great personalities and the love of life. She told us about the research that was being done and that yeah, it's a devastating diagnosis to hear, but at the same time, there is a little bit of hope that maybe we could possibly have some sort of a cure for, for Reese and Ryder's diagnosis. I'd love to be able to see our boys see. I mean, that's, 
that'd be, I'd give about anything for that. I mean, yeah. I'd love just to be able to see him stop the progression and maybe even see a little bit better would be phenomenal. For Buddy Lazier, the mission is simple. Accelerate the research towards a cure. In a race car, we spend so much time lost because you, you, you're trying to determine what is it that you need to go faster. And you know, the engineer, you can, you can waste your time if you're not focused on the real problem. If you misdiagnose what the problem is to begin with, it's all just a wasted effort. And so, uh, you know, we want to make sure that they continue to do their, their work. It's imperative they continue their work. We're trying to get the guys in our laboratory to have the same sense of urgency and the same sense of win and the same sense of uh, 230 miles an hour and not one mile per hour less. For Lazier Partners Racing and the UI Win Institute for Vision Research, this year's Indy 500 is a leg in the ongoing race. Being involved actually helps me because I know enough about what's going on. I'm not a scientist, I don't understand a lot of it, uh, but I can at least follow where they're going and I say my job is to give them fuel. Later on we'll be watching these top-notch cars doing 225 miles an hour. That's how fast research is moving today. So, uh, yeah, it's very apropos to sit in a yeah. setting like this. And, Fasten you know, your seatbelt. You betcha. Batten down the hatches, <laughs> let's go. You know, there will come a day when we're able to uh, properly uh, help our daughter. And until then, we're going to give her the best care possible. And uh, Ed Stone and all those guys are allowing that to happen. With what they're doing there to help us, to find a cure for Jacqueline and for others, is where we're getting our hope from. We've spent 12 years trying to maintain Jacqueline's vision. Now it's about finding hope to get the vision that she has lost and find it and get it back.